So I've been spending quite a lot of time this week refactoring the application to make it cleaner for me. I can always tell an application needs refactoring when I go to look at the code after a few days or weeks and it's kind of hard to get up to speed with what's happening. So there's several things that I've done. I've added logging and I've made uh, some of the settings forms into their own components and isolated to only the settings page. Originally I had the username, display name and the registration page, but now it's just username and password. So let me just take you to the uh, the bootstrapping part here. So what we do now is once we uh, we want to load all as much data as possible and then load up this felt app because that and then we want to also save that data so that we don't have to fetch it unneededly. Now normally with server side rendering you'd get a lot of the information that you needed from the server session immediately, but that's not the case with this um, SPE app. Some people also ask me why is it not a Sapper app, but it's just kind of more easy to deploy a single page application and kind of easy to understand. So that said, um, we can see here the bootstrap page. We also will have this emulation thing. Uh, ignore that for now, I can talk about that later on. So anyway, this um, back end in it is what we do a lot of the heavy lifting to get the data for the application. So we just look at this file here. Um, the backend init function is actually within the Firebase backend. Um, this was actually originally called the Firebase store, but I've created a separate place for the store. And the store is the stuff that persists information that's reused amongst the app. So um, the backend init, what it is is we it goes to our get current user, which checks to see if a user's logged in. And once we get this user login information, we then check to see that the user is um, verified and this user is a Firebase user. And then we do our um, a new function called get user data and store. This goes and gets the extra information about the user that's stored in Firebase real-time database. It could be other database, but it gets um, the display name and the username. Now that said, there is a property within a Firebase user to have a display name, but I just didn't want to have it there stored arbitrary. I wanted everything extra for the users to be stored in the real-time database. So anyway, the uh, the get current user function is um, it uses the Firebase auth method, and you've seen that before. Um, the get dat user data and store it um, goes to the Firebase database, and we have a, a new object called users, and we store everything under the user ID, and we just get the data. And we can see here that we're also logging data as well. We have in the app, we actually, at each stage of something happening, I'm doing a log so that it's easy to follow um, and debug things um, just by seeing on the console what's happening. So there's a lot of that going on there. So as you can see, we do a query in the database here and we're logging it returned and uh, we're just logging to the console. If there's not actually data in there, it's because the user hasn't actually created this custom data. And that's a new feature that I've added. Um, let me just go and create a... So if we go to settings here, once the user creates their first account, this username and password, this personal settings, uh, display name and uh, username is initially blank. So there is a case in the app when no data would be returned from this column here. And in that case, we um, we do another thing. We, we, we update the store with the user ID and that's used to determine whether or not a user exists in the system. Um, better just to look at the code and ask me any questions if you don't understand what's going on there because it's quite a lot to explain. But for me, it works quite well. So if I just look at the console, and I'm just gonna have to resize this window a little bit. So if we look at the console now, and actually this is a, 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 what I've done with the logs, is that um, when you deploy, it's a production build. So the logs I'm using now uh, check to see if it's production or not. So I'll show you this thing running in dev, and you'll see all the logs that I'm running. Okay, so we're just going to, okay, so we're just going to go to terminal here, and we're going to fire up, um, we're just going to run up npm run dev and this will have the production flag set to false and I'm just refresh so now we can see lots of logs going on there so for example um, ignore all these warnings so we do this attempting to get user locally current user found successful and displays the Firebase user and then it attempts to get the data for real-time database 
and that's also going to the Firebase, not emulating, not locally. So we get that data here. Um, that's pretty much it. And we can go to our route, like settings. That's an authenticated route. So now the console's telling us arrived at authenticated route is reader authenticated. Uh, we check to see that it, it is. And then um, that's pretty much it. So in terms of uh, now the registration page doesn't have the the forms for manipulating user data. We can see that the forms are here. And um, these actually perform checks to see if a username actually exists or not as well. That's a, a new thing I've added. So if we just go to uh, the real-time database, Right, there's a user of 77 here. So if we go in here and let's just, uh, okay, that's a little bug there. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be spinning like that. But anyway, okay, I've messed up the query. But anyway, normally <laughs> uh, it's a cores issue. Oh yeah, that's right. Because there's problems with um, cores sometimes. But anyway, if we do it in uh, production, we should see this effect that if the username already exists, Okay, I need to uh, work on this a little bit more. You see, it's quite a lot of things to remember. Um, that's why I'm adding these logs in. And eventually, we're going to add some uh, some unit testing, end-to-end -end testing to catch all these things out because it can drive you nuts trying to remember what parts are all working. And even this is just an absolute simple, simple app. So anyway, uh, these are the, some of the refactings that I'm doing. Uh, I've probably confused a little bit here, but uh, it's a work in progress. So anyway, in terms of the, the store... The store is storing the current user data. And it's very, very simple. It's just like this, but it's used all over the application. So we can see that um, it's, for example, in the apps felt where we're displaying stuff like uh, if there's no user from the store that we're storing once at different points of the application, we display not logged in. If the user has not completed their display name or their email, then we display this message, please complete the, your profile and settings. You see that quite... I almost knocked the mic over there. You, you see that quite a lot in applications, you know, so you haven't completed your profile yet. Basically, I wanted to have the sign-up process as simple as possible and less forms and code for me to maintain. I know companies like Twitter and that will have a huge, big, complicated sign-up process, which for this application is not what, what we needed. Because I'm also wanting to build different applications, uh, different stacks with this kind of full-stack starter. So in a sense, um, so when, when the user gets the, once they log in, right? So this this thing here, get user data and store a method here, loads user data for authenticated user and persists in this felt store. Once the user goes, uh, is authenticated, we then um, get this query and we get the value. And this user, we actually store within the actual um, user data store. And we use that all over the app for various, various things. So for example, also we can see in the components inside of the uh, the root component settings, the root components are for just pages that are actual components. And then we can have other components inside pages. So in the settings page, we import the user data store. Unfortunately, it looks like it's not being used here. That's because Svelte converts it into the dollar yeah, user data store thing. And it's, ah. I'm not actually using, I'm definitely not, I'm not using that there. That's okay. So we can delete that, but it's used within the personal data form. We can see here. So what this personal data form does with the user data store is that it takes the value and clones it so that I can just work with this value and not have to worry about messing up stuff in the store. And I could potentially undo things and revert things within the form. And at the moment we're just actually writing to that value and uh, in this case, it's a display name. And when they click submit, it just takes the, it goes to submit personal settings. And then we, um, we've got the user data clone and uh, we just call this Firebase method, which updates the display name. So that's it. That's all it is. And that's quite nice. So potentially we could add any property we want uh, in the form and uh, and we can re reuse a lot of these things. So that's really all I want to talk about in this video. I'm actually, the code has got to a point where it's easy to follow the flow. 
and I'm, I'm getting more happy with by the day. And uh, we're going to talk more about user profiles and we'll add um, social networking features like, for example, following users um, and those sort of things. And we'll get the emulation down because I'm talking to a lot of the Google developers on Firebase tools and some of the emulation stuff, I've, I've been finding some bugs about it. Um, there's certain issues that we're getting. So, for example, uh, in the emulation, uh, there's some problems with inspect functions and there's an issue with that on GitHub. So, like, there's if you try and do that in certain instances with certain credential files, it will then throw some random error and then you can't debug the cloud functions and that's the, that's the error that we're getting. So, anyways, I'm enjoying this and I'm going to keep doing this until this thing is bulletproof and hopefully you guys can take this code, fork it and create your own startup companies with this as a base just to get to market quickly. That's all. That's my, if, if somebody does that, I'll be so happy. Okay.